let me bring my screen i hope it is visible yes hey good morning all welcome to the 17th patna mills of meetup and the today's topic is sns sqs and the mills of lashan so thank you for having on a weekend uh, uh like we are uh, we are the organizer here om is not here due to some other meetups going on parallelly so myself amit uh, i work in apicero as a solution architect i am a certified mills of uh, architect and platform architect working in it for over 12 and a half years and in mills of for last 6 years so i would like to uh, uh give the opportunity to sam to introduce himself hi sam yeah so i am sam das so i am working as a engineering leader at tricon infotech and i am a certified mills sort of developer and architect and also like i am the person behind data with fun and you can reach out to me for any queries yeah. thank you sam so uh, i would read out the safe harbor statement both the speaker and the host are organizing this meetup in individual capacity only we are not representing our companies here this presentation is strictly for learning purpose organizer presenter do not hold any responsibility that same solution will work in your business requirement uh, this presentation is not meant for any promotional activities some housekeeping rules A recording of the meetup will be uploaded within the event page within 24 hours. Questions can be asked at any time in the chat and answers question. Uh, we have enabled the mic for you, so you can uh, in, uh, you can ask by unmuting yourself. And yeah, please give us the feedback after the session. You will get a form. Please fill the uh, feedback so that we can improve on our session. Okay. Yeah. And the speaker for today is Sagnik Adhikari. So I will hand over to Sagnik. so you you can take from here sagni i'll stop yeah. your presentation you can share your screen uh yeah i hope my screen is visible it's just coming up for me as well yeah okay mm, thanks amit thanks for bringing me in Uh, so good morning everyone thank you for joining you know on a weekend uh, i am speaking for the first time in a mules of meetup i work as a solution consultant at apicero i have approximately 4 years of it experience initially started off as an aws developer i shifted off to mules of in the past i think one and a half year and that's a bit about myself uh, so today uh, this is the agenda how it looks like so as as you know the topic is sns sqs and the muse of liaison so we would be thinking about a term that actually brings us to this topic you know uh, so the term which has already become kind of a watchword these days as you can say i think you know this term called microservices and microservices architecture so despite being introduced fairly recently i think it was 2011 that the term actually came into being while it was still under some experimentation uh but as you know it has gained a lot of traction you know within this few course of years that uh people actually learned about the term so uh this microservice architecture i would just as the first point says the need for decoupling so microservice architecture is something where you have this huge chunk of service which you decide to break down you know into small pieces so before we do that you know i think we should think about why we should actually break down this already working fine service which is a bit big though but why should we actually break it down you know uh why should we decouple so uh anyone anyone from the crowd can share any thoughts on why you think that we should you know uh break down this huge service into uh, small pieces and small white circles as you can see on your screen anyone can share anything you can say uh minimizing the error reusability okay great it makes more flexible to add new features and redeploy independently uh... right amazing amazing point you know a uh, great point uh, make, being made over there so actually yeah it is true you know breaking this big huge uh, circle into the small 
circles that is introducing microservice actually leads you to have more freedom while you develop these individual components. Like, you know, you don't have to worry about this huge service while you just want to change a, maybe a bit of a part of it. You can work on that part individually if you have that part separated out, you know. So those small parts, as you can see on your screen, these white circles actually are uh, the building blocks behind this whole microservice architecture. Okay, so, but uh, doing this also, you know, has its own set of, uh, I would not say disadvantage, but has its own set of challenges. So, okay, you had this huge circle and it was working fine and you didn't have to worry much. But suddenly when you actually introduced this small little circles and broke down that huge circle, now you have this additional burden of trying to make this small circles try to talk to each other, right? So, you know, your circles need to be able to understand what the other circles are doing in order to effectively function as a whole, like the original big circle used to do. So there, you know, there comes in a bit of uh, uh, thinking as how you would be doing that. So one of the concepts that uh, we usually have is we meant set up a messaging queue sign kind of a thing, you know, where we will send messages, like how we send text messages and chats and everything like that. So that actually is uh, something that we will be looking at today. And while we have a lot of flavors in order to do that messaging, you know, we have so many kind of messaging services that are available. We have the one that Mulesoft provides, the in-house one, the AnyPoint MQ. Then we have Rabbit MQ, we have Apache, we have JMS, we have so many options to choose from, but today we will be doing it the AWS way. And you might be thinking, why should we do it the AWS way and not the Azure or the GCP way? But, uh, you know, I actually love doing it the AWS way because MuleSoft, if you uh, know about MuleSoft, it is actually an AWS shop. So delving deep into the architecture of MuleSoft, right from Cloud Hub 1 to Cloud Hub 2, how actually it functions, if you just know a bit of, about it. You'll see that it is actually an AWS sh a shop sitting on AWS. So for Cloud Hub One, if, you, if I give you an example, you know, for Cloud Hub One, when we had you know virtualization in place, it was nothing but just this AWS EC2 instances doing their magic. And then we recently shifted, right? We recently shifted to Cloud Hub Two, which again relies on another AWS service, the Amazon EKS, you know, the Elastic Kubernetes service. And we have some other uh, set of services as well that I just put in here uh, for uh, context. You know, AWS has a plethora of services going through each one of them is like uh, not possible, but uh, these are one of the, uh, a few of the most famous services that AWS has. And today we'll be using the AWS uh, SQS and the AWS SNS, the top and the bottom one. And, and I also put, you know, the S3 VPC RDS and Lambda just for context, VPC, you know, the VPC is no, actually, the VPCs that you have in Microsoft, the Amazon VPC behind the scene again. And uh, we have Lambda, one of the most famous, I think, serverless offering that AWS has, uh, but not going into much depth about that. So we will be looking at SQS and SNS, you know, how they can work in tandem. So first, the service that we'll be looking at first is the uh, AWS Simple Notification Service or SNS that I've been telling for the past few minutes. Uh, so what is SNS? So before we uh, go to what is SNS, you know, we need to understand about this idea of a pop sub model or a publisher and a subscriber model. So as the name, you know, uh, suggests publisher, publisher is someone who publishes, right? And subscriber, subscriber is someone who subscribes to whatever is being published. So you have, you know, you have your TV channels that you might have subscribed to the lot of OTT platforms that are there that you might have subscribed to in order to view their content. And there is a publisher sitting behind actually pushing those content that you have actually subscribed and that you view. So there comes a bit of, a, I think, middleware between a publisher and a subscriber. I actually think about it in that way. So that is called a topic, you know, in SNS, that is called a topic. So actually the publisher will, you know, push that content to this particular topic. And you actually have subscribed to that topic. You know, this topic, you can think about this topic as a kind of a channel, maybe. Uh, kind of a hot star or a Disney or a Z5, maybe, you know, that topic. So everyone who has subscribed to that channel, whenever the publisher has published some content, it goes to this topic and whoever has subscribed to this topic will be able to view that content, right? Uh, that is the, actually the idea behind this pop sub model. And that is how, that is what SNS is uh, a kind of an analogy. If uh, 
that helps your understanding you know so as the second point says you know all the subscribers you know of that topic will get notified whenever uh, that topic has a message being pushed to it uh, by the publisher so the thinking about the subscribers like who can be the subscribers coming into a bit more technical being a bit more technical about this you know we just don't consider uh, the end users like you and me to be subscribers there can be a whole host of subscribers out there i have just listed a few of them here you know uh, you can have a lambda function that is subscribe to your topic that does something based on uh, the message that it has received from that topic then you can also have something called an http endpoint that we are very uh, aware uh, very like uh, popular you know http endpoint that we always use we also have kinesis i'm not going into kinesis this again about uh, another service offering by aws but uh, coming in uh, leaving all this behind we also have very simple subscribers like just an email or an sms endpoint we can also have them uh, we can also have this uh, simple subscribers to that topic and we of course have uh, sqs so uh, also uh, just the fourth point is a bit uh, that you can consider you know why you should think about using sns and not any other service so sns you know has this itself being distributed geographically so your data is uh, told to be saved by aws aws says that your data will be safe and durable because it has been you know replicated at various places and not just one place so uh, you have that uh, safety over your data on that case so the next service that is there is sqs uh sagnik if you don't mind yeah. i have just to add one point maybe you can also correct for the http point which you mentioned the endpoints which we can put over there maybe mm -hmm. http or https just want to make a point like we cannot provide a direct security with that like how we do client id enforcement or auth we can have is... like we can we can provide the headers or something but uh directly in sns topic when we subscribe i don't think we can put that correct we need to have correct. something in the query parameter either yes 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 yeah. as just like over there you cannot have it correct abhishek thanks for adding that yeah okay so, uh, uh, yeah so the next service you know uh, that we have uh, will be looking at today's uh, sqs the uh, simple queue service which is actually a subscriber for us today you know this will be acting as our subscriber today uh, to uh, certain sns topics that we'll be seeing in a while so uh, sqs what is sqs so sqs is again you know a queuing service as i have been talking about a message queue that is so it helps you you know uh, integrate your decoupled architecture now you have this microservice and it helps you those small little circles talk with one another that is what sqs can help you in uh, sqs you know has this uh, great control that it offers with what can be done with the message it can go very granular that is why you know sqs i think has a bit of an edge over the other uh, message queues that you might be using sqs has this visibility timeouts delay queues dead letter queue i think of course the other also might be having but visibility timeout especially is i think and delay queues are one of the two uh, things that actually makes i think sqs stand out you know uh, and it it is just not on the entire queue you know you can have this timeouts on the message itself which i think is great you know on a single message you can have it that is the level of granularity that sqs can provide you with Uh, and again you know sqs also has you know redundant infrastructure that can provide you more durability so you are uh, safe with your message that are is that actually resides in your sqs also uh, another thing to look at is how your data is you know when your data is sitting in sqs so your know, your data will be by default when it is in transit your data will be encrypted however when it is at rest like when it is sitting at sqs and no listeners has actually picked up that message from that sqs by default that message won't be encrypted but you can choose to have encryption you know uh, and for that you can use another sor service by aws the aws key management service or kms we won't be looking into that today but uh, you can do that yeah so this is the problem statement of today what we'll be doing today so uh, we will be kind of building a pop sub approach i won't be going into very details about how you'll be uh, actually this is a huge a uh, chunk of uh, demo that was there i just have will be focusing on the S sqs and sns part of that demo okay so uh, we have you know this sqs queue that is called the main stock queue and we have this three sns topics these are actually stocks stock topics you know uh, google gm general motors now these are all stock topics that are there in the stock market you can uh, check out on that so what we'll be doing is whenever you know an event is posted to any of these sns topics you know that actually mimic your real stocks 
the SQS will be receiving it and will be logging it back. I, for the sake of brevity and for the sake of simplicity, I'll not be doing it much with that uh, message. I'll just be logging it for you. Uh, you can actually be very uh, imaginative with your approach and you can do a whole host of things with that message. You can send it to, uh, you can send it as an SMS, you can send it as an alert, you can do uh, a whole lot of things with uh, that particular um, message, right? Uh, but I will be just logging it down in your console, the studio, and that is how we will be taking it off today. Yeah, I think uh, we can go to the demo. So before you know, we go to the demo, I just wanted to know if anyone has any questions or anything, any thoughts, or if I go, should go slow. You know, I tend to go fast sometimes. I'm sorry about that. <laughs> uh, no, no, Sagni, I think you're going good, and I don't see any question. Maybe we can start the demo, I think. Yeah. Okay. Okay, great. So uh, before I start the demo, I actually wanted to show what I have in place for the demo so that the demo actually works. Uh, so this is my AWS account. Uh, this I actually have logged in through my uh, root account. Uh, so in my root account, I am in my, this is the dashboard that will open up once you log into AWS. This is a free tier account that I am using. Uh, for the first uh, one year, you'll get a free subscription on the services but there are still limits. You can't use all the services for free, but the ones that we are looking at today, SQS and SNS, you can of course use them for free for the first 12 months, you know? So uh, I'll be showing you the SQS and the SNS, what I have. So as I was saying, yeah. In SNS, I have four topics. I actually showed you three, but I have four. One of them is just a test topic. Uh, just for testing my connection on you can you don't have to have a separate topic for testing that's fine like i have kept it uh, but these are the topics that i just showed you over there in my uh, presentation and i have these two uh, sqs one is the main stock queue that i was talking about and associated with that main stock queue you know i have this main stocks dlq uh, which is the dead letter queue that is associated with this main stock queue now this uh, uh, dead letter queue is nothing very fancy you know it is not very different from an ordinary queue it is just an ordinary queue with a name called dead letter queue. I think you are in, in that way. You just tell the main queue that whenever, you know, whenever you can't process a message, please send it to this particular queue, which I have named as dead letter queue. That is the concept behind uh, dead letter queue, nothing fancy. Uh, so this is the queue that I have, uh, main stock queue. Uh, everything is default, you know, you, uh, I haven't done much with uh, the configuration, but something that I have done is, you know, I've added these three SNS subscriptions. So under SNS subscriptions, I have these three the three topics that I showed you. PG is the test topic that I'm using. I uh, These are the three actually uh, topics. And uh, my SNS is actually subscribed to these three uh, topics. So now you might be thinking like, uh, that is all okay. Now I have everything in place. So whenever I'll be pushing something to any of these three topics, my SQS will say that, okay, I have this message and it'll be popping up in this particular queue. But uh, actually it is not, uh, we need to go through another step in order to actually achieve that integration. So there's something called a access policy, you know, uh, it is a whole new uh, discussion topic, uh, but you have to add this access policy, which we call as an IAM. So the policy looks a bit uh, overwhelming, but uh, I will just show you and you don't have to, uh, uh, think about it much, but uh, this is how it is. So the policy has four parts to it. It has a principal who is the who, we have an action, who is the what, we have a resource, which is a which and a condition. So in plain English, what this policy is trying to do is, you know, we actually attach this policy to that access policy section that I just uh, showed you. So what this policy is trying to do is actually in this resource, it is saying that there is a certain resource called a main stock queue. And any other AWS resource that looks like uh, this particular ARN that you can see, you know, this particular ARN, any other AWS resource that has this ARN to it uh, with my account number to it will be, what will it be able to do? It will be able to do a send message to this particular queue. That is all that it is doing. Why, how, where I'm saying that it will be able to do, I'm saying it over here in the allow section. The effect is allow. So I'm allowing any AWS resource with this particular ARN to send a message an SQS message. This is the action that I'm allowing on this particular resource, a main stock queue. That is all that this policy is doing. Uh, if you have any doubts about this policy, we can talk about it. This policy can be more, you know, you can bring in more uh, 
I think more granularity to this policy. You can, I, this policy almost follows the principle of least privilege that AWS actually recommends. But yeah, it can be of course improved. Uh, but if you have any doubts, we can you know discuss more on this policy. But uh, that is for some other day, I believe. Uh, for today, yeah, this is all that uh, we have. So once we have this policy in place, we need to connect it. So back to you know, this is quite comfortable for you, everyone out here. I think you see it most of on most of your days, I believe. So the AnyPoint Studio that is. So what we did is, you know, I have in my global elements, I have pulled these two uh, properties from the public exchange that is there and I've configured it for my configuration. Uh, if I go back to my PPT, I can show you at a glance. What are the things that I have configured? So these are the things that I've actually configured over there for my uh, SNS and SQS. So I have used basic connection. I am. I haven't been much creative about the connection type. You can be very creative about the connection type that you want to use, but I wanted to keep it simple, you know. So I have just used a basic connection type, which just requires you to have, you know, the AWS access key. I can show you how you can create that AWS access key. After you create that AWS access key, you'll be getting this key ID and a key secret that you actually use in order to uh, connect uh, to this SNS and SQS from your uh, MuleSoft. And these are the parameters. Just at a glance, I'm not reading through them. Uh, we have these parameters that we have uh, set up in Studio. So I'll just show you quickly, you know, how you can set up the uh, access key, the AWS access key that is. So going back to my account, I have my security credentials somewhere. Come. Oh, I have my security credentials. I went into the wrong section. Yeah. So I have this access key that I have set up. This is the place where you do it. Uh, you can create your own access key and then you can use it. The access key tells me that I had used it, you know, in the past 24 hours sometime. And I created it almost a year ago. My my subscription, my free tier subscription and all the fun actually ends tomorrow. I have to pay uh, from day after tomorrow for AWS <laughs> because it has passed this one. It'll pass it so you are free trial tomorrow. So I decided to hold this meetup today while it's still free. And I had used it with SNS. I had used this key with SNS. Uh, and it was created 364 days ago, as I was saying. Uh, you can create your own key by just going here and providing your uh, credential uh, not the credentials just the access and it will give you the key just be mindful to store that secret you know while you will have this id uh, while you'll have this id you won't have the secret once it's created and gone you know that's the only time you'll be able to view the secret so uh, please be sure to you know store it somewhere else safe so that you can use this key if you lose that key you have to again create a key which will again give you an id and a secret uh, but uh, keep that secret that is just a one time thing okay so yeah, so over here in my SNS, everything is again very simple. Uh, I have used secure properties and something. Yeah, so this is just the secret key and the access key that I was talking about. Region, I have done it in uh, North Virginia, the US East one. And that is the test topic you know, I was talking about. One of the topics I have used as a test topic that is there in that uh, test topic section. This is the SNS that I have, the SNS configuration that you need. In I have my SQS configuration. This uh, looks pretty same, pretty similar. Test uh, test uh, ARN. I have used my main queue ARN. Uh, the main queue ARN you can obtain from the oops from the main queue. Actually, go to that main queue. So this is the queue with its ARN. This is the ARN, the Amazon resource name that uh, you have to use in order to have this uh, set up. Okay. So once we do that, we are all set, you know, to test our flow. I have two flows, the SNS publish and the SQS message trigger. They don't do much as I have told. They are a bit of a part of a larger, you can say a larger project, uh, spinning in on the SNS and the SQS part because that's the topic for today. I have actually kept this particular mess uh, flow stopped as you can see 
because I want to show you something how it actually makes the way it makes its way how the message actually makes its way from here to the AWS console, the SNS topic, and finally uh, the queue actually receives it, you know, over here. So uh, this is stopped, and I will be running my project. Yeah, I can just run it. Listener does not do much. It's a plain post body that we'll be using. So I am saying that, okay, your GM stock is at a record high. Please do something. Please sell your stocks. You can be rich. I'm using the topic GM for that pu uh, purpose. I can use any other topic. What matters is this line three topic. Message can be anything. This is just a fictitious message. Actually, this uh, listener used to listen to an actual endpoint that I had obtained from Rapid API, if you're aware about Rapid API. They actually give you livestock data that you can use. And if you if you pay, you'll actually get uh, more live data. Otherwise, you know, if you are not paying, if you're using a, a free version, there are always a few uh, gaps, a few uh, not so live data that is there. So yeah, but this is just a simple listener for today. And this is what I'll be posting to it. I'll be saying that uh, go to, this is for the topic GM, uh, the GM stock, the general motor stock. So when I pub, uh, okay, this is up. So when I send this, uh, yeah, so it just went wh where it went. I'll show you where it went. So it went to this queue. So if I refresh, hmm. so you can see now it has one message available. This is the same message that actually I sent from here. So if you go and check, you can actually check that message from here. Instead of doing it from your studio, you have the send and receive messages section where you can go. And then you can ask it to poll. So before you poll, uh, I would just like to uh, spare a few moments about uh, the types of polling that is there, short polling and long polling. Short polling is what is there by default. Short polling actually is a very busy customer. It never waits for anything. Even if you don't have a message, short polling will just return and say, I haven't found anything. But long polling is more patient. You know, it waits actually. You can set a duration about how much you want it to wait for. Uh, it can wait up to a maximum of 20 seconds, not more than that though. But still, it's more patient than uh, short polling. So this is a long polling and I have asked it to wait, I think, for five seconds. Hmm. So once I will poll, it will do a long polling. And it has found one message. It's the same message that actually I have posted from here. And I'll be showing you its contents, you know. Mm. So this is how the message looks like. And the message actually stays over there in that message section. If you see, this is what I had sent. This can be your livestock data with your live numbers out there. And it will be staying over here. Uh, yeah, so this is about the message and how it actually makes its way to your uh, SQ. SQS over here. Mm -hmm. So now, uh, now if I just, uh, what I'll do is I'll just stop and I'll just uh, start this flow. Okay. I hadn't started this flow because if I had started this flow, you know, this will consume the message immediately once it is uh, published to that GM or any topic for that matter, because it is actively listening over there. And I wouldn't have been able to show you this nice message that I was showing you from the console. So I'll just uh, start this flow. I'll do it a debug, okay. So as soon as the flow started, uh, you know, it also picked up the message, the flow picked up the message. And once this uh, receive messages operation picked up the message, it will be instantly deleted from the queue and I won't be able to show you. So if I go back to the queue now, you can see the message is no longer available in the queue. Why is it not available? Because it is present over here. So if I show you the console, uh, no, the debugger and uh, here is the message, the same message that I was showing you uh, in the console. So this is how the message looks like. So you just have to, uh, nothing much. You just have to provide a few. You have to read it in this way. You have to tell it that you are reading a JSON and also output it as a JSON. So I'll be doing that. 
I'll be showing you. I have logged that part. So I log this part in my console. This is again the message as it was uh, while it was staying on my SQS. And from this, I'll just be retrieving the actual payload. The actual payload is your actual data, this data. And then you can send it to anywhere you want. You can process it and you can do any operations on that as per your requirement. I've kept it very general um, for you to see how it will show up. So once I do this, I have, uh, okay, uh, it has not printed it yet because it is there. Uh, what this does, this also does a very simple thing. It tells that uh, this message is a JSON and also output it as a JSON. So once I do that, my flow ends and I have that message over here. This is my message. This is my message. Same thing. Uh, so this is how you can, you know, uh, take your message from any livestock and you can send it as an alerting mechanism, a stock alerting mechanism in order to alert your customers how they uh, should, uh, you know, act. You know, uh, stocks are uh, very volatile. You need to act very fast. And that is why we use something as an SNS and an SQS because they actually work the best in tandem. Having them together, you know, as volatile as live as a stock data, it can provide you almost almost live response. You know, that is very essential uh, whenever you want to act very quickly. You, know, you can you know leverage this particular pattern of using an SNS topic with an uh, SQSQ listening to that topic. Okay, so that is the end of the demo actually. But I just wanted to. I think I don't have anything else. Yeah, I just wanted to show you one thing about this DLQ. So when when will your message go to the DLQ? So can anyone tell me? So what do you think? When should your message go to the DLQ? Guys, anyone just try at least. When there is an error in processing that message. Right, uh, that is true. So I actually brought up a hint for uh, everyone out there in the audience to see when your match, uh, message will actually go to the DLQ, right? So whenever some error occurs, the message is expected to go in the DLQ. But again, since you are using SQS, you again have your own set of customizations that you can do with when you actually want it to go to the DLQ. For my purpose, what I'm saying it to the D, uh, to my queue is, see, whenever I have received a message in the queue, if I continuously keep receiving that same message more than 10 times only, then I want it to go to the dead letter queue. Otherwise, I don't want it to go to the dead letter queue. So what is the basic expectation? The expectation of your SQS listener is whenever it listens to that message, it will remove it from the message. Just like you saw, right? Whenever uh, your uh, receive topic operation really, uh, listened to that message, actually received that message, it removed it from the queue. The message was no longer available in the queue, which is a indication that, okay, my message is going to be processed successfully, perhaps like uh, once it has received, after that, it can fail over here. Your SQS won't help in that case. But once it has received it, your SQS is more or less, uh, your SQS is sure that, okay, I have, the message has served its purpose. I don't have to worry about it anymore. However, uh, let me stop my flow. Yeah, however, I want just wanted to show you this message receives is something that you can use to your own uh, customization in order to handle how you actually want it. So maybe sometimes uh, your consumer was not able to process your message for the first time, uh, but you just want to be a very bit of a lenient or out there. You might want to give it another try, you know, so you can leverage this uh, receive messages section out here. And say, okay, can you please wait for one more time or maybe another time? Like I am waiting for 10 times, which is not pretty, being, being very lenient. This should not be that lenient also. But yeah, uh, you can actually set this number uh, to your own uh, expectation. I don't believe it has a, let me check once. It might have also. So yeah, so it has, uh, where is it? Hmm. So it, it, it should be a below 1,000. So that is the maximum that you can wait before your message actually uh, leaves your main queue and actually goes to the associated DLQ. So this is the main queue and it's associated uh, DLQ, the DLQ that I was showing you, right? So that was about, you know, the dead letter queue. I think this is also very important when you are considering um, SQS. Mm, yeah, I think that was all from my side, the short one. So if you have any thoughts, you can share. So Sagnik, 
quick questions uh, as you are aware we have any point mq uh, capability also that provided by mulesoft right? right and right. it is doing pretty much the same right, right? right. so yes. what is the thought process we should go anyway any point mq uh, take a license and i believe this sns and uh, S sqs also take some cost right when we utilize definitely definitely so you know uh, speaking on the cost aspect so this SQS actually will give you 1 million requests per month for free. When you're going more than a million, like you're going for 1 million to 100 billion, you just have to give 0.4 dollars. I think that's pretty less. Uh, and also for SQ SNS, also SNS actually the cost, you know, varies by your subscription type. Like if you have an SNS uh, request listening to it or an HTTP or an email endpoint, your cost will actually depend on uh, that aspect. Like what is your subscriber type? Mm -hmm. uh, Okay, and and uh, again, MQ, <laughs> MQ again. You know, if you are if you are aware, MQ again relies on your uh, AWS SQS itself. SQS is actually the backbone behind your MQ. Mm -hmm. So the question is like, uh, I'm just putting a different scenario in which we have to, uh, you know, come up with the uh, uh, SQS or uh, uh, SNS approaches like that, so that right. it will be clear for the audience when to choose when. Right. So probably you just explaining the capabilities that uh, AWS is providing, mm -hmm. uh, but it, it will be great if we put some scenarios like uh, if you don't have the uh, any point MQ and you are running on uh, on 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 prem things. I believe this okay. will work for on prem as well. Right. 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 Indirectly. Right. Because Yes, because these are, you know, global endpoints that you can leverage. I am showing you like for the sake of simplicity, I have showed uh, these two endpoints in a single uh, app. If I publish it to a cloud app, it will be a single app. But, you know, you can have this in one app. You can have this on your on-prem and it will still work. Correct, correct, correct. A any limitation for these uh, SQN or SQS for storing the data or any challenge that you uh, encountered? Yeah, you know, uh, I mean, it is on the message size. I think you can go up max of a 256 KB. But, you know, AWS has also come around that it has introduced something called an uh, extended client library, which mm -hmm. actually allows your message to be of a size of 2 GB. So building on the 256 KB restriction that it had, it has this extended client library for Java and Python, which mm -hmm. actually enables you to expand your message size up to 2 GB. Mm -hmm. uh, but if you still want it to be bigger, yeah, I don't think so. SNS or SQS would, you know, allow that. Okay. So you, the per message or the complete message? Uh, per, per message. Every message can be of a size of 256 KB if you're not using the extended client library. Otherwise, it's, this message can be 2 GB in size, a single message. Okay. So what about the complete one? I'm just, uh, uh, it's just brainstorming here. I'm not like... <laughs> Account, you mean the number of messages yeah, SNS SQ, SQS does not provide you a limit on the number of messages that it, that it can hold. Cool. It is supposed to hold as many messages as you are pushing to it. Okay. I haven't faced any restrictions on, you know, SQS telling me that I can't take any more of your messages, but I have faced restriction on the size. Mm -hmm. Size okay. per message, that is. Fair enough. Because in the market, we have a different JMS broker, right? So, correct, correct, uh, correct. As I was saying, good. so many options to choose from, right? Mm -hmm. Right. All right. Thank you. Thanks. Thanks for your question. Yep. So, Sagnik, just to understand, like, unlike any, uh, unlike any point MQ, like any point MQ provides 10 MB limit. Okay. Each message. Okay. Okay. And uh, yeah. Okay. And uh, do we have any limit on the number of messages as well? Like maybe if you have told and I missed that, like, do you have any limit? Like uh, how far I understand for any point MQ, we don't have such limit in the queues messages, but mm. in flight, in flight, we can have a maximum of 120,000 messages. Yes. You know, I think we in flight over here also, there was some limit somewhere. Uh -huh. mm, if I can show you in flight, what can I show you? That there is more than one lakh twenty thousand. Yes, it, it was the same number, I think, right? One lakh twenty. Okay. Yeah. Okay, so, which so also hints that you know hmm. SQS is behind <laughs> the scenes. <laughs> yes, but the size which you say two fifty KB you mentioned. Two fifty six KB, right? That is the size per message. Oh. Huh, but for uh, any point MQ per message can be of ten MB. Okay, okay. So, so you can use this extended client library that uh, gives you a size of two GB. Hmm. Okay. 
I think Abhishek' question is if uh, uh, in the behind the scene and uh, point MQ if this SQS or a SQN mm -hmm. is you know, coming involved, in future, yeah, then the 10 MB why we have restrict in any point MQ it should be the same, like just the brainstorming, like just right, to right, right. Connect, yeah. connecting the dot. Nothing then, else. then again, like maybe uh, Gaja, it may be the extended version which is associated yeah, with the uh, MQ's thing. But it, in extended version over here, it is two GB, correct? Mm -hmm. And they might be they might be giving it as uh, 10 MB for uh, any point MQ so that they can diversify that. Yes, might yes, might yes. be uh, Amazon is directly providing such uh, you know uh, capability to directly use it or through any point MQ they are restricting. Might be some you know uh, things in their mind why they have restricted uh, 10 MB. Yes, Might be yes. the different mechanism they can have for uh, any point MQ, right? They are putting right. some, yeah. There is a blanket over there, you know, actually, mm -hmm. they don't tell us. <laughs> right. Anyway, but it's good, it's good. Yep. All right. Okay. Uh, any Anything, anything else? Anything? Broadcasting, can, did we cover broadcasting also? No, it's a simple one, right? Broadcasting? Yeah, the messages we... No, we actually didn't cover. It's a, a methodology. That's the one to many that actually SNS will help you. I haven't covered it over here. So, you know, using SNS and SQS actually brings in another pattern. If you are aware, it's called a fan out. So, mm -hmm. you know, you can have your SNS, which actually helps you broadcast because you know many subscribers can be listening to those topics and mm -hmm. you know this particular topics again can be subscribed to many sqs queues so it actually becomes a fan out when you are having this huge set of subscribers which are listening to this sqs queues and these queues are again tied to topics okay thanks agni thank you thank you for your questions i think agni we are good Okay. And, and, uh, we can give the participant time on a weekend. Yeah. Right. I will stop the recording. Yeah.